it's incredible just because you look at the last four and you're going, like I said, the margins in our league, you know, little bounces that don't go your way. And, and then, you know, I'll be honest, some of the first five games we won, we probably didn't deserve to. So it's, it's, it doesn't even out, but yeah, recently it's been like nothing can, nothing's going in the net. <laughs> we need yeah. somebody to make a play, but hopefully against Portland, um, yeah, something can change. Hey guys, Doug McIntyre, Fox Sports soccer writer, joined today by Philadelphia Union head coach Jim Curtin. Jim, you're coming off a scoreless draw midweek against Inter Miami. Um, you got a quick turnaround though, Portland this weekend. But before we get into that, you're still sitting in first place in the Eastern Conference. Um, what do you like about your team 12 games into the season? What areas do you think you need to improve? Oh, well, Doug, uh, we're the most frustrated first place team in the in the league right now. That's for sure. Uh, it's a position where you know, it, it speaks to the fact that the, the bar has been raised at the club, right? We're, we're not happy with, uh, with ties, uh, especially at home. So uh, we've had some good ties in recent weeks. When you talk about Nashville opening their stadium, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with LAFC, uh, those are good ties. But I'd say the last two, home against Red Bull, where we have chances to kill the game off and we don't. And then this one against Miami midweek, um, not our best performance. Uh, the positive is you kept a clean sheet. Uh, and now we know we have a very difficult road game in, in Portland, a, a place that's always exciting to go to. The crowd is always uh, electric there uh, and, and the games are always at a high intensity because of the atmosphere. Um, but again, yeah, in first place. But uh, like you said, you could spin it two ways. We're unbeaten in five, but we haven't won in five and we're not happy about it. <laughs> for, for your team, one guy who's been great to this point of the season, Daniel Gazdag, six goals. Um, what's been the key for him? Special. So uh, if you rewind to last year, he came straight from Hungary in the season there. It was a relegation battle. And, and, and with it playing with his national team, uh, he had almost 60 games in the calendar year, which is, is brutal. Uh, so he jumped right into our, our team without any rest, adapting to a new culture. Um, what you've seen from Daniel this year is, has been ex exceptional. Uh, to be honest, uh, he, he probably deserves a couple more goals and a couple uh, more assists if guys are finishing off plays. And uh, for me, he's he's in the discussion, the early discussions for an MVP type of candidate. He's having that good of a season. Um, once the ball at his feet and all the tough spaces, you know, can make that final pass that, that cuts out, uh, carves open a defense uh, and then can score from from distance and can uh, have some savviness in and around the goalkeeper. So a really special player. Uh, I think you'll continue to see him get better and better. Uh, and in a lot of ways, we need more guys to contribute uh, the way Daniel has to to help, you know, take the, the burden off of him at getting the goals and assists. Looking ahead to the next couple months, there's an international window in June, yeah. not just at the senior level, but at the at the youth level too. Under 20 uh, uh, CONCACAF championship coming up in June goes into July. There's a number of players on your team who yeah. might be on the U.S. squad. Um, really important tournament. It's it's World Cup, under 20 World Cup qualifying, also Olympic qualifying. Uh, and some of your guys are big parts of that team. How many guys do you think you're going to lose later this summer and how will you navigate it? Yeah, we've had open dialogue and, and working with U.S. soccer has been excellent. Uh, all the people there are very professional. And, and obviously, we want to support our national team. It's very important that we do good, uh, obviously, not only at the World Cup at the highest level, but also in the youth competitions, because uh, America is starting to be looked at as a, a real hotbed for talent uh, that can go anywhere in Europe and play it at top clubs. So we always want to support our national team. Uh, like you mentioned, we have four, four to five guys that are on uh, our, our big contributors to that group. Um, we'll be missing them and we'll be working with U.S. soccer at, at different moments. Uh, obviously, there's uh, certain games that maybe have uh, bigger magnitude than the others. Um, every game's important. Don't get me wrong there. But um, we'll work with U.S. soccer to release our guys so that they have the best possible roster to go and, and win those games. Uh, because, again, it is important uh, that the U.S. does well on the international stage. And uh, I have to say, just as a general comment, uh, the talent of these young players here in Philadelphia uh, is special. Uh, they're growing before our eyes. They're contributing to the first team now. Um, the more and more minutes will come as the season goes on. Um, but yeah, in, the, in their absence uh, over this break, we'll, we'll look to you know take points and get get some help from uh, some other places as well. Our Union Two call ups and, and different ways you can kind of fill in your roster. We know how good the Union are developing players. We've seen you sell some on to your Mark McKenzie, Brennan Aronson, yeah. both U.S. Men's National Team players. Brennan's brother Paxton plays for you. Came off the bench last night. For those that haven't seen Paxton as much as, as Brendan, who everyone knows well, an established guy for the national team, how are they different? How's Paxton's game, uh, you know, how's he his own player? 
Yeah, look, uh, it, it, you're always going to have comparisons naturally because they have the same, they share the same last name. Um, you know, just like Brendan, uh, you know, it, it's not uncommon at our training sessions that uh, teams from all over Europe and top clubs are coming to just watch him train, you know, so they're very high on him. Uh, if I'm doing my job and he's doing his job, he won't be here much longer. Uh, so we'll enjoy him while we have him. Yeah. Um, but he's a special young talent. Uh, you know, him and Brendan share a lot of the same uh, things in that they have a love for the game as simple as that sounds uh there's competitions in their in at their house in a little facility that their their father's built for them there uh those 1v1 duels in the backyard something that i actually had with my brother i don't i don't think it's a coincidence that um they both have turned into really good young pros so um you know when you you, you try to find differences in their game i think paxton still has room for growth um in terms of the, the fitness side of things, you know, obviously when you think of Brendan, he's covering the most distance of, of any player literally on the on the globe, <laughs> you know, when it, when it comes to uh, his distance covered and his sprinting. Um, Paxton has that capacity in him, but he's building it up now. Uh, and as any young player, he can always improve his fitness. Um, when you talk about around the goal uh, and finishing plays off and just shooting direct at goal, I would say uh, Paxton right now is a little bit ahead of where Brendan was uh, this time, you know, 18 months ago when he was here. So. Tremendous upside, uh, really special player. And like I said, a lot of eyes are on him. Uh, we always talk with him to not make that feel like there's pressure on him. It's more our job around him to, to set him up when the time is right and, and have him perform uh, on the field. And everybody's doing their job, teammates, coaching staff, uh, of him reaching his maximum. You've known the Aronson family for so long. Coach Brendan in the academy, I believe, way, yeah. way back when he was, he was just a kid. How much do you keep in touch with him now that he's overseas uh, in Austria and, and, you know, such a focal point for the national team? Yeah, a decent amount. Obviously, it was easier when Jesse was his coach. You know, it was a, it was a simple in-between. Um, and you could kind of get, I'll just say, both sides of what's going good and what he's adapting to. Uh, but Brendan's the kind of kid that grows on any coach that he's around. Uh, the, the more he's around you, he's got an infectious attitude that he just comes with good energy and wants to get better every day. It's something that I wish every young American kid had. He truly loves the game and, and uh, wants to improve. So, yeah, he's always a text message away. I'll keep an eye on all his games, let him know when he's playing good. Uh, you know, and he, he's, he sends texts back too and congratulates us and has uh, lots of eyes on all of our games too. So, um, you know, once you're part of the, the union family, it's never, never the end. And I hope someday after he, uh, lifts a trophy at Bayern Munich or wherever it might be next, <laughs> um, you know, he'll, he'll come back and finish his career off here in Philadelphia. Maybe Leeds United, where, where Jesse Marsh is now, the former New York uh, Red Bulls coach. Um, yeah, 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 I'll just say uh, I, hope, I hope Leeds stays up. Uh, wishing Jesse all the best, obviously. And, and obviously, Brendan, you know, it's, it's been talked about as certainly a player that fits the profile of, of what Jesse's trying to build there at, at Leeds. So that's certainly... Uh, I'm sure something that is uh, highly possible. <laughs> you're, you're close to Jesse as well, Jim. Uh, teammates with the Chicago Fire way, way back then, uh, way back when. Um, you've established yourself as one of the top coaches in MLS. Um, I'm sure you have ambitions, though, to, to emulate Jesse um, at, at some point. I mean, do you, how much do you think about that down, down the road, maybe testing yourself in Europe? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm very happy here in Philadelphia, but I think every uh, professional athlete, every professional coach always wants to test themselves at the highest level. So if, if that opportunity presents itself, you'd obviously have to explore it. Uh, I still have a lot of work here in Philadelphia to do. I, I love it, coming to work every day, uh, watching young players get better, watching young coaches get better as well uh, and, 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 and go on and do do big things. Just like Pat, Pat Noonan as an example right now, what he's doing in Cincinnati has been incredible. So uh, I'm really happy with with the work that we're doing here. Uh, we can always get a little bit better uh, and improve, but uh, at the same time, uh, if there is an opportunity to test yourself in in Europe, I, I'd like to ch to do that. Um, obviously, guys like Jesse uh, are paving the way, and it's uh, kind of they're pioneers and they're they're kind of chartering a, a course for us. And and uh, their success really helps any young American coach. So uh, we should all be Leeds fans. <laughs> we should all be pulling for for Jesse to do well. Uh, and if, if there's anybody that can get them out of this, I know it's him. Um, so again, yeah, uh, I'd love to test myself someday in Europe, but uh, for right now, I still have a lot to learn, a lot to improve on. Uh, and this is a great environment for me to get better and better working with Ernst Tanner here. It's the Philadelphia Union at the Portland Timbers, Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Jim Curtin, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much.